Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. We are so glad you're here. It's good to see all of you, and it's rare that we have an, an uh, item in a community association where everyone is impacted, you know, something that affects us, everyone, on such a basic level, and we appreciate your being here. This is one of those topics. Um, at this year's annual meeting, when the president uh, mentioned that one of our strategic objectives was to improve cellular service, this was the only item that received applause. So we were very pleased with that. So I'm happy to be here and discussing this item at this time. We have today Jack Roberts and Dan Bahuniak who are here to address improved cellular service within our community and in the greater community. And we're pleased that Jack Roberts is here because he is an AIPCA member. He owns several properties here. He is also a resident at the sanctuary next door. He is an Amelia Island Club member and today he is a concerned citizen who has a very keen interest in this project because this is his home. We're also pleased to have expert and advisor Dan Bahuniak here. Uh, he is CEO of Skyway Towers. Now Skyway Towers has the mission to provide high quality broadband towers to wireless carriers, to governments, to communities like ours to meet their goal of deploying their next generation wireless networks. Dan and his team have built over 1,500 towers nationwide, and he has 300 sites in development. So we're glad that both of them are here. And gentlemen, I will let you take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I have lived on Amelia Island since uh, 93. I have been on the plantation since 98, on a couple of properties here. And uh, by happenstance, I've been around the telecom business for over 30 years. And uh, for some of those years, I was the chairman and CEO of the largest company involved in measuring the wireless industry. Everything about it, uh, markets, advertising, pricing, perceptions, network quality, and all of that sort of thing. So I come at this from a point of view of having a bit of experience. Um, as I have continued to live on Amelia Island, I move farther south each time. And the farther south I've moved, the worse things have gotten in terms of telecom coverage. You've all experienced this, undoubtedly. Uh, well, why is that? And the answer is that mobile that you carry around is too far from the antennas and the base stations which link you to the rest of the world. Nearest antennas to you are Lewis Street and Julia Street. That's why on the north end, you can get okay coverage, but in the middle and the south of the plantation, it's pretty bad. In fact, it's so bad that I consider it unworthy of a community like ours and of a world-class resort. So I think it needs fixing, and to fix it, we need towers. Everybody wishes that were not the case, but it is. We have to have towers. So what do you need to do to have the towers you need? Well, first you need about 5,600 square feet of flat land zoned appropriately. You also need it to be located where the carriers want it, the cellular providers. And where do they want it? They want it such that they can get the maximum amount of coverage for their dollar. So they don't want a huge amount of overlap and they don't want a lot of gaps. They want it to be just right. We have selected a couple of sites which we think do that. Uh, you also need access to roads and power and telecom assets. You need the roads to go right up to the compound that I've described because you have to bring in heavy trucks to do the construction and to do the maintenance of these facilities. Uh, you've got cranes to erect the tower and to do maintenance on them. So you need roads. You need power because these things are all electrical. Uh, most of the carriers will have backup generators and batteries, but they run off of normal FPU type power most of the time. You also need fiber and other telecom assets. So you can't just put it anywhere. They, there are certain locations that work and many that don't. Uh, preferably it's not close to any occupied buildings because a lot of people worry about them falling. Towers almost never fall, but there's still 
a sense of concern about it. So not close to occupied buildings is better. And of course, everyone would like them to be invisible, but they are not. Second choice is NIMBY, not in my backyard. Well, we're, we're working on that. And the truth of the matter is that um, you can't have it perfectly, but we think there is a way to have the maximum improvement in service with a minimum uh, impact on the community. We work collaboratively with the Omni, uh, with the club, with the IIPCA, and there's general agreement that A, we need help, and B, these sites might be very well workable. So two towers, the fewest we think can achieve the result. I believe, based on our studies, that they won't be visible from inside any single family dwellings. They will be quite visible from the two driving ranges, Long Point and Oak Marsh. They won't be visible from the restaurants, although I can find two tables in the bar at Long Point where you can see it. Don't sit there if it bothers you. Um, we think you will be able to see it from the upper floors of the Omni, but you will see it only from the walkways that you use to get to your room. You will see it from the upper floors of a couple of the condos, like Dunes Club and Seaside Retreat, but you will see it from the guest bedrooms of those places, uh, and that's just the way it is. Um, you will see it from some of the streets, glimpses sometimes, if you happen to be looking in the right direction at the right angle, and there are a couple of spots on a couple of fairways where you might see it if you're erroneously not keeping your head down. So overall, we think we've done the best we can on that. The plan involves cutting no trees. Uh, they'll be put in open areas where uh, they're being used for mulch right now and other things. So no trees are cut. They're already surrounded. The base of the tower will already be surrounded by natural vegetation. To the extent that that ever proves to be insufficient, more can be planted. Um, there'll be no out-of-pocket cost to anyone on the plantation, not the club, not the association, not the Omni, nobody will pay any out-of-pocket money. And um, nothing about this as far as we know and believe is hazardous to anyone. So that's the outline of the overall plan. We think it's good, not perfect, solves a lot of problems, creates a minimum of new problems. Um, Dan Bahuniak, the expert here, is a guy I've known for 21 years. Um, Dan and his team have built and owned a lot of towers, and they have been willing to work co collaboratively with all of the constituents here to try to achieve the best outcome. So, Dan, sure show. Okay, I just wanted to uh, give you a little bit of background. Uh, for those of you who don't know it, uh, the way we worked with the Omni and with the AIPCA uh, we, and, and with the Long Point Club, uh, we took uh, uh, a look at all the locations that we could possibly uh, uh, consider on the golf courses. And the ma maintenance areas of both seem to be ideal because of the infrastructure that Jack mentioned with telecom, fiber, uh, and power to those locations, it was perfect. They had areas where they were storing mulch. To make sure that everyone would be as comfortable as possible, we flew balloons. Uh, we're talking about 150 foot towers, so we flew balloons up uh, so that the, the folks who were interested could go take a look at how high they were. And some of the pictures that I'm gonna be showing you today took those, uh, we, we also went around and took a lot of pictures from a lot of different angles just so that people could see what it would look like from various places and then what we've done is we've overlaid the tower to the height of where the balloon was so that you can actually see what it what it'll look like um, so as Jack mentioned we've been building towers since 1995 uh, and we used we work not just with the folks on the island to pick these locations, but we also 
uh, worked with both Verizon and T-Mobile. Sprint and AT&T are currently in a period of, of upgrading. They're trying to, frankly, they're trying to catch Verizon on, on 4G uh, deployment. Uh, and so they've been upgrading their existing sites. They're not really building any new sites. Uh, so they really didn't have any input into this process yet. But just from my background in the industry, these locations will suit them too. But both T-Mobile and Verizon have said they will support these sites. They had input into the, uh, the selection and they will help us through the zoning process by saying we need them. Uh, so uh, we mentioned the Unipole. Some of you, if you, when you come in on the island from the south end, uh, just as you're about to cross over the bridge, there is a standard monopole. Uh, within the industry, we've heard it described as a toilet brush uh, or other egg beater or other things. Uh, so what we've selected here is a unipole. This one we built on the Brandon YMCA. Uh, and so that's an example of the, of the unipole. The antennas go inside that tower. And so that's all you will ever see. Uh, it won't have anything hanging on the outside. So uh, as you can see, when you, when you see a monopole, they have a bunch of antennas in them. What happens here is Verizon may take two of the canisters. The canisters are anywhere from eight to 10 feet tall. Verizon sometimes takes three, the other ones take two. And so you have to be over the tree line anyway. And your average tree line is about 60, 65 feet on the island. So it's 150 feet to allow us to have enough canisters for all four carriers. And one of the reasons why you want to have all four carriers, if you can't fit all four carriers, you need to build more towers. And so the zoning boards really encourage you to minimize the number, and so do the residents typically, minimize the number of, of towers on the island. So just to give you a little bit of background, we'll speed through this, but um, the history of, of cellular, frankly, I, this island has about the worst coverage I've ever uh, <clears throat> run into in the last five or seven years. Uh, and that is due to a lot of things, but your trees are absolutely gorgeous, but trees eat um, RF signal. There's moisture, there's water in the leaves, and so that interferes with the radiation. And over time, the growth in usage, the, the original phones, the 1984 cellular phones were meant for voice. They were not meant for data. Uh, and they, everybody thought, even the president of New York Telephone forecast in 1984 that there would be no more than one million users of cell phones because he felt that they were a rich man's toy. And that was a Bell system officer. So he's been proven wrong. Uh, and what's happened is really the inflection point in my mind is June 29th, two, 2007, when the iPhone was introduced. And when the iPhone was introduced, data started becoming important. Data, the ability to take pictures, and surf the web. And when someone is surfing the web, that is the equivalent of 10 voice calls. So right away, AT&T, which was, had the only right to sell the iPhone, they weren't prepared for it. Their network sagged. They got a lot of bad publicity, particularly in New York and San Francisco. And so uh, Verizon saw what happened. They didn't have the right to sell the iPhone, but they immediately started upgrading their network so that when they did have the right to sell the iPhone and the Droid phones, their network would be able to handle it. And so that's, that kind of was the impetus for the race that started. That race wound up with added features, lower, lower costs, 
in some ways, but higher cost, but more, it was, it was a product that more and more people wanted to use. So when you take a look at the usage, you know, from 1997 through uh, 2012, your, your penetration is now over 100% in the country because people use more than one device. And so it's, it's gone up five times. Your uh, voice minutes have gone from 5.8 billion to nearly 200 billion. Uh, monthly data usage, which didn't exist in 97, was 139 billion megabits. That's a lot of traffic. And so, and oh, and by the way, wireless only households. People are dropping their wireless phones. I mean, wireline phones. They're just disconnecting and they're placing their safety and comfort and features on the wireless phones. So, and the FCC has now come to the point where it has designated wireless an essential service. And I, I hate to use the phrase public utility, but it is getting some of the same rights as public utilities for placement of facilities. Uh, and the FCC has just started an inquiry. They designated someone to take uh, charge of this. They are looking at how to manage gracefully the discontinuance of wire wireline wire communications. They just don't want it to unfold willy-nilly. They want to get out ahead of it. So it's one of those rare areas where the government wants to get out ahead of something. Uh, what's happened in the past is going to continue even, even worse. The only reason I'm showing you that slope is because uh, you can't see the numbers, but that goes all the way out to 2016. 2012 was right there in the middle, and you can see the slope. The yellow is uh, data over mobile PCs and tablets. The blue is data over your cell phone. And the red on the bottom, that's voice. That's really stable. So it's now all about data, which data you have to get much closer to the user. And so uh, it's, it's going to get worse. If you don't get more signal into your homes, it's going to get worse because the more people who are trying to make calls and use those antennas on the towers, the more you're going to get crowded out. It's just try like trying to put, you know, 100 gallons of water through a garden hose. You're going to have to wait your turn to get, get through. These are the locations that we've picked. The Amelia, uh, Amelia 1 on that chart is Oak Marsh, uh, in Amelia, uh, uh, the, the maintenance area. Amelia 2 is the long point. They're actually perfectly spaced for what we need because the, the signal obviously is stronger the closest, closer you are to the towers. So as it gets away, as you go further away, if, if, this was, if they were spaced further, that area in the middle would probably start degrading. But you're typically in good shape if you're within a mile, and those circles are a mile. You're typically in pretty good shape. The only thing that's unpredictable in my mind when I look at this, at, at this island your magnificent tree coverage. Your, your, uh, it's, it's beautiful, but it's painful for, for RF. But spacing them the way we have there, just two miles uh, apart from each other, I think we're in good shape. Now, when you look at this also, by the way, RF signals can travel five miles. So if you're a boater, you're probably going to have really much better service out on the water. Um, and if you live in an area that doesn't have trees, you're really going to have good service. But um, here's the unpredictability. And I'm only showing you this. This was a, a, a different location. You see that uh, those two, they look like an atomic energy design. Those, each one of those is a cell site. And you can see how the coverage is solid around them. 
and then the one that's in the middle is a proposed site. And you can see how ragged the RF coverage is getting as it's, supposed, uh, as it's getting toward that yellow area. And what's really interesting about this is take a look at it's skipping over, the RF is skipping over some of the yellow and getting up into the hills. This is up in Idaho. And so it's far away, it's like four or five miles away is better than a mile and a half away. So I just wanted to show you, when you're looking at the diagrams that we gave you with those little circles, it's not really that precise. Here's some of the uh, photo sims. We talked about we floated the balloons and then uh, overlaid, photoshopped the, the tower onto the picture. This is uh, Oak Marsh leaving the West Villas. Oak Marsh from the driving range. Long Point from the cart staging area. It's over the, it's at midway. You see a tree there, you see a line. Oh, okay. You're not gonna be a good thing. Well if you couldn't see that one, you can see that one. So that's the, that's the driving range at, at Long Point. I am particularly proud of the fact that we have been able to find locations working with our landlord partners that yes, they're visible. They're 150 feet tall. But they have to be because if they're down sh lower, then instead of, frankly, if this is a house, the signal, and there's a tree here, the signal only has to go through one tree to get to that house. If you have it down low and you have a tree here, a tree here, and a tree here, it has to go through the trees. So that's why they have to be so tall. They also have to be tall enough to cover, the, the, the lower they are, the more towers you need. And so I think we've found locations that absolutely minimize the, the view. You, you'll see them from the highway. You'll see them while you're playing golf. There may be some neighborhoods where someone may be able to look through their trees and, and see it, but I, I think we've done well in minimizing that to the extent we can. Oh, by the way, there are going to be far more pictures that Joe is uh, putting up on the, uh, on the website, the PCA uh, website. So there are a couple dozen from different angles. Uh, I always include you know, what are some of the new, some of the services, healthcare. I will, I'll cut through this. We'll put this on, on the website as well. But really what's starting to happen, um, like CBS, I think it was in March, CBS Morning News reported that there are now nearly 44,000 um, medical health and fitness apps. Uh, things like, here's a, one of my favorites because you know, we're all reaching the age, we remember what it was like to take care of our, our parents. Um, and a pill that sends a message to the caregiver, so someone can live in their house longer independently because their doctor or their caregiver knows that they're taking their meds because when the pill hits your stomach, and reacts with the enzymes, it sends off a signal that connects with the phone, which then connects and sends a message to your caregiver or your doctor. Um, I have a, a friend uh, that was having uh, fainting spells, and they were getting longer and longer, and they always happened when he was sitting down. And so he would just topple over and, and be unconscious for 10, 15, 20 seconds. So he went to his cardiologist. They could find nothing wrong. So what, they put a phone on his belt, and uh, he, he wound up passing out for 30 seconds. He called the doctor's answering bureau. 
the answering bureau got the message from the phone and said, told him, you need to get to the hospital right away. Your heart stopped for 30 seconds. It was not a heart attack. And so he went to the hospital. They put in a uh, pacemaker. And he's fine now. But, you know, there are all these cool things, aside from the fact that 70% of your uh, 911 calls are made on wireless devices. I, it's just, we rely on these things, and there are so many more uses for them. They're just becoming so valuable in, in, the, in our lifetimes. So these were just emergency services, some of the examples of what's going on with the Red Cross and, and others. Um, the healthcare things that we talked about. Uh, we mentioned, you know, those. Oh, and I, okay, so we, we work with Verizon and T-Mobile. Uh, and so uh, Jack and Joe have asked me several times, how long is this going to take? Uh, it really comes up to the, uh, comes out to be the, up to the zoning boards. Uh, and the more support that we can muster for it, the quicker it will go. If we run into opposition, uh, it will take longer. If it winds up going into court, it could take years. Uh, but it typically is, if it's going to go through well, and so far it looks like it is. We've been in touch with the county, and they seem to be on board for the need. We've given them an outline. They've helped us, you know, with the heights and and they've given us some some of their feedback already so it looks positive but you know government they won't guarantee anything uh you have to file the application and put it out for notice and all those kinds of things so which we are going to do but from the time that we make that filing to the time we get the approval it's typically six to nine months and then after it's then after we get the approval the construction period is is quick, 45 days or something like that. And I, I mentioned AT&T and Sprint, and I really do believe. Uh, we're starting to see AT&T and Sprint, by the way, after a couple, couple years of being indolent, uh, starting to really um, gear up for 2015, 2016. And they, they really do, because Verizon has lost no, no time. Uh, they jumped out ahead of everybody to put in their 4G networks, and while everybody's trying to catch up to them on 4G, they have been, um, they call it a, a, a densification program. They're just putting in more towers, more equipment, getting their services closer to the customer. Uh, I, and from what I can tell here on Amelia Island, they have a long way to go. I've, I'm on a Verizon phone, and it just, it's not good. I guess that's it. So, questions? Yes? Um, let's assume we put this tower a year or two ago, and AT&T was kind of speaking. Yeah. Would we have had AT&T service by now, or they just wouldn't have? No, I think, I think when these go up, you're going to see AT&T going up. Uh, uh, eight, eight, look, AT&T knows their service is bad on the island. Uh, they have, we call them sell on wheels, they have a cow parked permanently on the, in the Omni parking lot, right by the garage, because they know that's, there's a usage, you know, uh, in, uh, companies have their outings there, and so they know it, it's terrible. They're going to put antennas I, it's my understanding they're going to put antennas up on the roof on the Omni in order to help that. But they're also going to need these because it's just, like I said, between the trees and the usage on the island, it, I think they're going to go. They're certainly going to go to the one at, uh, down at Long Point. I mean, I know they're going to go on that one. Yes? I saw that there's another tower, uh, American Beach Tower. Yes. Is that going to interfere or help? No. The, the, these are going to, these, the, the industry, the towers that are nearby uh, that, um, are called neighboring towers. And if you looked at the spacing, 
that one is right at the edge. It's not within the plantation, I don't think, but it's, it's right at the edge. So the coverage is going to lay out perfectly uh, for that tower. In addition to that, we're working with Verizon because one of the things that Joe asked us to do was work with the carriers on a long-term plan. Something, instead of one, I'm going to paraphrase your exact words, instead of one site now and one site three years from now, tell us what is the layout that you need so that we can figure out where, and if we have to reserve some areas, we'll reserve them for the future. And so when we talked to the Verizon and T-Mobile guys, because they were willing to, to spend some resources with us, they actually took a look at the maps and talked to their RF people. And it was Verizon who said, we'd also like another one. So, uh, but it's up even further north of the one that you're referring to. So while they have this opportunity to make this case that we're making with the county, they want to take advantage of that because they've been struggling with the county on getting sites within it. And then, of course, there's Fernandina Beach, which has its own rules and may be a little bit more difficult to deal with. But the, but the, but the more momentum we can build for this, the better. So, and so I, I just think that what you're going to see here is a movement. You've got the Omni business, the business community. Uh, you've got a, uh, the uh, AIPCA. You've got other homeowners associations which have indicated support for it. And you've got locations that the carriers like. And they really, it's kind of a no-brainer to look at those locations and say, and say, okay, you know what, this is kind of a painless way to do it. So, yes, and back. Uh, my question is, will this help us with our reception? We live in Ocean Club Villas, and we purchased one of those M-cells or booster boxes from AT&T. We have that, but they say it's because our condos have so much metal in them that we don't get good reception. Will the tower help us? It should help because metal and concrete also, in addition to trees, metal and concrete do interfere. So that just means you have to have the tower closer in order to t penetrate in. I say it should. I don't know when it comes to how much concrete is in there, how much metal is in there. I will say, without really trying to disparage the people who say these things, they often are looking for excuses to say it's not their network. It's someone else's fault. So I, I, I have a condo down at the beach, uh, and it has a lot of concrete and metal in it, and I have service. So. Yeah, you'll you'll know in a year whether whether it will really help. Yes. I just had a comment that I wanted to throw in that might be of interest to people. My brother-in-law lives on Wax Myrtle, right over here, um, eighth of a mile from where we're sitting now. He's a T-Mobile customer, and in the last six weeks, he's totally lost the ability to get cell phone calls at his house. After going through three or four layers of bureaucracy at T-Mobile and finally getting to someone who would tell him something substantial, he was told that they T-Mobile has turned the antenna at, antenna at American Beach further north, yeah. which I suspect is due to their issues with the city of Fernandina Beach and other things. So they're trying to do things for other people, which in, in that respect have hurt us. Yeah, and, and I, the minute you said what you said, I, I suspected that was the case. What they're doing is they know what, if, when you look at, at a cell tower, that one that I, I referred to, those antennas are put on a, each sector is 120 degrees. So you'll see three, three packages. They can aim those antennas to where they're getting the worst service to try to correct it. And so it's like a short sheet. 
you know, you pull it up to your chest, your feet get cold. Yeah, yeah, and so I don't know how many antennas uh, they 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 have up on that up on that tower, but typically the way to solve that issue is not to turn an antenna, it's to add another antenna. Uh, but if they've already added, if they've got four on each face, then uh, they've got another problem. So, yes. Yeah, I have T-Mobile. In the last couple of months, the same thing. I mean, I've always had trouble, but I always put it, uh, have to put it on uh, wireless, you know, just to yep. cell, and then half the time it still won't send anything with cell. I mean, it just might as well throw the phone out. It's really, really mad. My suggestion is complain. I, you may think it's not going to get anywhere. But they do count their complaints. Uh, and we have a very good working relationship with T-Mobile, with right? And, and actually, our, our strongest relationships are with the regional guys who manage the local guys and headquarters in Washington, uh, not Washington, DC, the left coast, Washington. And so uh, the more we can point to the the folks complaining in this area, the quicker that any any questions about budgeting and getting on the towers will be settled. Are they are they going to go ahead and uh, put them up, or do we have to vote, or what what is what do we have to do? Uh, what the process from here will be that uh, Skyway will sign leases with the Omni for the Oak Marsh site and with the club for the long point site those will be then uh tentative based on zoning it'll go to the zoning board the people showing up at the zoning board to say we want this would be helpful but there's really nothing anyone has to do if there is a large consensus that says oh no we don't want this then you know the various constituencies here uh, the community association the omni and the club would probably turn back. If there's no negative consensus, then it would move forward uh, and and go along the path that I've suggested. Joe, is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay. And, and uh, typically, to, to kind of magnify what Jack said, the, the people who are opposed, I don't care what the issue, what, what the issue is, the people who are opposed to something are normally uh, the ones who show up at meetings, write letters, th that kind of thing. The people who are for something, uh, just as kind of, I don't know whether they just assume it's going to go through and be approved or whatever. So if, if, if you really are in support of this, all I would ask you to do, I mean, someone's going to oppose this. I mean, they, they oppose it everywhere we go. There's always someone who opposes it. So uh, all I would ask you to do is, if you're, if you're in favor of it, either send a letter to the zoning board. That they're politicians. They need to know that they've got political cover. And they've got to be able to say, if they've got nothing but negatives coming in, they're assuming that everybody on the island is opposed to it. But if they're getting a mixed bag and they know it's the right thing to do, every once in a while politicians will do the right thing if they feel that they've got cover. When you're dealing with government authorities to get uh, something approved, I highly recommend you stress public safety. That's a trigger with them. And you, you can use examples that we have here on the south end of the island. We've had people in Long Point, Marsh Creek and other areas pick up their cell phone to dial 911 for an emergency. And because of atmospheric conditions, the Duval County 911 answers. They don't know where Long Point is. They don't know where Marsh Creek is. Wow. So uh, I just want to stress that with your, the county, our county authorities to get the permission. Public. Yes, in the back. Okay, just 
just one question I'll talk about. Um, has there been any studies, statistical studies done showing um, real estate values versus the, uh, you know, the quality of cell coverage? Or is it just too new and moving too fast? No, it, uh, actually, there, there, there are studies. And there were studies that were done, I'd say, from 12 years back to, you know, further back. And the studies that were there um, uh, indicated that there may be a negative uh, reaction to it uh, on, on, on housing on values. Value. On housing values. Right. Okay. I'm not I, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm about to get to that. Then, starting about 10 years ago, and these are, done, these are studies by the licensed um, appraisers, you know, not, not real estate agents. Real estate agents tend to react subjectively based upon their own experience, anecdotal experience. But these, were, these are studies that have been done by licensed appraisers. Uh, and what they have discovered, and it really started ramping up after the iPhone, what they've discovered is that there was either a neutral to added value to having a good telecommunications infrastructure. And when, right, and when, they, when, when people dug deeper, what they, what they discovered, and it's, you know, you can pay for you know, studies, but common sense will tell you, the younger the person, the more important it was to have a good telecom infrastructure. And the people who were at the prime home buying ages, the people all the way up to like 50, 55 now, and I'm looking back at that, uh, are, are from there, if you take them in chunks of 10 to 15 years, it's all that much more important. And, and even real estate, things are, I think it was an ABC, I, I, the, the, one of the national, um, news media covered this story and they had a bunch of quotes but the bottom line of and, and England ran a, a similar study um, but the bo bottom line is that people are now telling their real estate agents that I won't buy a home without solid RF and earlier in this week I was with with a with an attorney who told me that he was just he's in the process of buying another home and that's exactly what he told his real estate agent. So, we should make sure that that message is part of the message that goes out. It's not just the health message, but the whole real estate value. Because the truth is, it's just going to get worse as more people demand this. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. You're the one who's handling the microphone. Who's next? Okay. <laughs> um, this is a comment. Um, the facts that you've cited, the criteria that Jack gave, the community impact that Joe would be able to describe and uh, as, the, as, as the year goes on and so forth, there's a national magazine called Common Ground. Every once in a while, homeowner associations do the right thing. They do it in the right way. And an article from the three of you in that magazine would be of tremendous subsequent value to this community. So not only would you be improving the life um, quality for those of us who live here right now, you'd be bringing attention to the community and how to do this right um, for our future. Joe's getting his exercise. He's not going to have to get on a treadmill this afternoon. <laughs> this poll that you put up, how reliable is it? Because we have a, another place in, in Colorado, and the whole cell system went down for about two weeks. I mean, I don't know what kind of antenna they have, but I mean, from what you described, it has canisters. So if it went down, you just put a new canister in, or what? yeah, it, yeah. What uh, the the canisters have three, sometimes as many as four antennas in them, and so if one of those antenna goes de dead, and that's the one that aims at your house, they're they're very reliable. I, I mean, but every once in a while, um, one will go down. The other thing is that if the carrier uh, goes in, if he has a trouble and he goes in to try to work on it, 
if there, if it's a part that he's got to order or something like that, it can take a week or two before he gets it. You would think that they would have them on stock, but depending upon what the part is, sometimes they don't. So, two questions. Yes. First, I noticed the the unipole that you have up. There's like a little bunker house at the bottom. Yes. Will ours have that little bunker house also? Y yes, uh, and that little that little it's a fenced in area, and so we work with the the landlords in the zoning boards to design it the way they want it. Um, and so, but they're, they're typically eight feet of non-climbable fencing of some sort. Uh, and behind that, the reason they're eight feet tall is so that um, both Verizon and AT&T actually put a shelter in that ha have their elect uh, electronic equipment. T-Mobile and Sprint historically, use outdoor cabinets, so they need less space. But because they use a shelter, it's higher. It's like six and a half to seven feet tall, but you can't see it. And then, but these locations are, they have natural vegetation around them. So even if you were standing next to them um, at the driving range or on the golf course, I'm gonna be careful about saying this, this is my recollection. Even if you were standing within 100 feet of them on the golf course, on the fairway, you would not see that lower fenced-in area because my recollection is that that growth all around it is taller than that. So it's but, not going to be painted orange or red or no. yellow or... But, but to the extent no. that it's insufficient, more plantings will be done until you can't see it. Yeah. And the last question, if I may, we have an airport right nearby. Are we going to have to get some kind of approval from the FAA for the 150-foot tower? No, uh, we already did that. We already looked at it, and no one was more shocked than I when we got the FAA study that came back. Apparently, the, the planes land in a different direction because the height limitation was it could go up to 430 feet tall without requiring any kind of lighting. And so, you know, number one, you're happy it doesn't have lighting. And number two, we were happy that we didn't have a problem, so. Does this mean that we can use our phones in the house and we don't have to stand on the porch when it's raining? Yeah, I mean, because I have Verizon and yeah. so do my kids and when they come, Everybody goes outside. Yeah. Okay. Next question. You talk about the fact that landlines are going to go away. How do I get it if I don't have a landline? Because, now, I'm not, okay. Here's what's happening. The stuff, the things that I showed you on those slides are things that are there today. Where Verizon is going with this and AT&T. You, you all know that AT&T, uh, well, maybe you don't. Uh, AT&T is buying DirecTV, the company. Uh, Dish Networks is looking at perhaps buying or partnering with either, partnering with Sprint or perhaps buying T-Mobile. There is a merger of, of just like Telephone service now merged with data and, and internet searches. LTE is capable of competing with the cable networks now to provide you internet access. And it is becoming capable of providing television and entertainment. So the LTE, and, and Verizon's going to start next summer, I believe it is, they're going to start providing in whatever limited areas they decide to provide it, they're going to start providing their television services, and it's a la carte. It's not, you don't have to buy plans. It's a la carte. If you only watch nine or 19 television stations, you would only subscribe to those. You get, would get to pick. 
they're going after the cable companies. They're starting by doing it over Wi-Fi. So you would have your Wi-Fi connection in your house, and, and your Wi-Fi connection would be connected to whatever internet provider you have today. Once, but the next step is, within the next, certainly within five years, more likely within three or four, you won't have to go to the internet. If your service is good enough, you're going to be able to provide your entertainment, your internet, your telephone service, all through LTE with the traffic going back up to that tower. And then from the tower, it get, it'll go to your internet. So long answer, but these guys, it, there's, there's there's a war that's about to go, uh, be started between the, the uh, wireless companies and the cable companies. That's what, one of the reasons why the cable companies, they, they see this coming. And they're putting all these partnerships together to put Wi-Fi everywhere. Because now they know that they need some kind of a wireless thing so that they can say, well, we provide wireless, we provide internet, we provide you know, home phone uh, service. They want to be able to do that. But the, the problem with that Wi-Fi is it's limited. It's not up on the towers. And so, you know, it's, I wish I was going to live long enough to see the way this stuff is going to, you know. Yeah. But the bottom line is then if, if you didn't put these two towers up, we couldn't experience anything. You, you could not. You still have yeah. the same lousy phone service. Exactly. So continue tomorrow. Okay. Left, right. Good. Well, I see we've, we've spent an hour, and it's been a very good hour. I want to thank everyone for being here today, and remember to, at when the right time, let's be sure and contact the zoning board. Will you tell us? We will definitely tell you. Your community association will let you know. Just one last question. Have you heard any rumbles of discontent at all, or are you just anticipating this? Yeah. It happens every time somewhere along the way. First, secondly, we've had a few people express some concern about the appearance. And I understand that. It's the best we can do. 